okay, when you're playing golf and you're, and you're just off the green, you know, your first thought ought to be, can I putt this? Can I just putt this onto the green and roll it up to the hole? Putting is always first thought because it has a big margin of error. Now, you can't putt through uh, heavy grass, obviously. It's very difficult. So your next thought would be, can I putt this with loft? Can I just uh, use my same putting grip and putting stance and uh, use a club that gives, enough, gives me a lift loft just to pop the ball onto the green and roll the ball to the hole? You know, we talked to this in the last uh, video. Can I putt with loft? Now, again, again, that is also a big margin of error. It's an easy, with a little practice, is very easy to play. You're, you're, you're not going to miss that very often. Now, sometimes you can't do either. You, sometimes you need a little more club head speed. The ball, the flags in the back of the green is 30 yards away, or you got to throw the ball up in the air and make it stop quick for whatever reason. you got to have more club head speed. So now you got to use what I call a part swing. So these little part swings around the green, it can be confusing for golfers because instructors tend to give it all kinds of different labels. Uh, they'll call it, uh, they're going to say you're, you're, you're going to tip it or you're going to bump and run it or you're going to pitch it or you're going to pitch and run it or you're going to lob it or you're going to cut lob it. They'll have all these different uh, labels and different techniques associated with every uh, you know, with every label. It makes it confusing for the, uh, the typical golfer, needlessly confusing in the uh, uh, hard for them to to memorize all this stuff. So I just try to keep it really simple. I just say you're, you're going to putt, or you're going to putt with loft, or you're going to make a part swing, and that's it from uh, from around the the green. Now when I when I think about the best players in the world, who are the very best at making these little part swings around the green? And I I come up with uh, Steve Stricker. He's great. Uh, Jason Day is fantastic. Uh, 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 Luke Donald is is great at this. Uh, Bryce and DeChambeau, these guys that are really good at this, they have a very simple technique that, uh, that uh, is very easy for, uh, I find, for my students to employ. You know, they have very quiet hands. There's not a lot of cocking. Their they're, they're movement is back and forth. They swing their club head back and forth, not up and down. They don't take big divots. Uh, they just keep their uh, weight on the uh, uh, left foot, and they just rotate around the, the left hip. If they want, they want a little more club head speed, they just make a little bigger backswing. That's it. It's, it's very, very simple. Now, uh, nowadays, when uh, when they're trying to get bring control the, the the amount of carry and the amount of spin, uh, it's become very popular just to use a different club. You know, when I was growing up, we only had our highest lofted club was a sand iron, 56 degrees, and we just learned to do all kinds of things with it. If I wanted to hit a lob, I'd just open it up and uh, hit a little cut swing and hold the face square. It's uh, I could do it if with a lot of practice, you could become good at it, but it, the margin of error is, is, is small. You know, you open the face up, you create more bounce, you're creating a deflecting blow, you're trying to hold the face square. It's a lot easier to simply control your trajectory and spin by using a different club. Now, for example, with what well, right now, my set currently, I got a, my, the wedge of my set is 44 degrees, but I carry four other wedges. I carry a 49, a 54, a 59, and a 64. They're all the same length. They all have the same grip. They all have the same lie angle. They all weigh the same. They're all balanced the same. The only difference is a loft. That's it. If I, if I want to bring it in high and stop it quick, I'll use a 64. If I want to uh, uh, bring it in really low and run it a long ways, I'll use a 49 or even a, a 44. Now, some players say they, uh, they, they don't want that many. It's confusing to them. They like to keep it really simple. They just want to have two, and that's fine. They got a 46 in their bag, and then they got a 52 and a 58. That's great. They, they can still use the same, these three clubs to, to bring it in to, to use their little part swings. Again, if they're, in the, if they're playing a par 5 and the pins and or the flag is in the back of the green, they might want to take their 46, use their little part swing and bring it in low and let it run to the back of the green. If it's in the middle of the green, they might decide to use their 52, make the same little part swing, and the ball's going to fly higher and roll less because they got 6 degrees more loft. Or if it's in the front of the green, they may just use their 58, square it up, and use the same part swing and, and, and do that. Uh, uh, Bring, and it's going to come in high and roll less. Now, some players uh, become very popular uh, to have uh, three wedges. It's very popular. They, they'll have a, what they call a gap, a sand, and a, a lob. That's just the, the jargon. And they, they'll have the regular uh, uh, wedge in their set. So they have a 45, a 50, 55, and a 60, and they control their uh, t uh, trajectory with that. And, uh, and, and, and that's great. You have to figure out what works, uh, what works best for you. Uh, now, Without, uh, I want to go over to my simulator now, 
and uh, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate this little part swing I've been talking about, how to set up and how to make this very simple little move. Okay, we're going to talk about the part swing and uh, why people struggle with it. So let's talk about the setup first. We're just going to have a narrow stance. We're going to pretend like I'm just going to take my, got my 59 degree here and I'm going to pop it about 15 yards onto the green and roll it to the hole. I got a narrow square stance. I don't want to be open because I don't want to pick the ball up. It tends to make me hit down the ball into left field with an open stance. I would prefer it to be more square. I want the ball in the middle of the stance. If it gets too far forward, it's easy to close the face and, and pull it left. If it's too far back in the stance, it's easy to be up and down and, and hit it fat. So I like to start out with the middle stance, square stance, and the ball in the middle of the stance. Square and the ball in the middle. Then we're going to have the weight on the left foot because I want, to, I want to strike the ball with a slightly descending blow without thinking about it. Now the lean, the calf lean. I don't want a lot because we'll be de-lofting the club. Also, this balance is designed to help you. There's bounce, the sole. The, the trailing edge of the sole is lower than the leading because it prevents, helps you from digging the club into the ground. So we want to maintain the bounce. We want to maintain the loft. We want to maintain the bounce. So your hands are going to be even with, or just slightly ahead of the club head, not, not way out here. And then here's your starting form, right here. That's it. Simple, nice square starting form. And when you get done with the swing, your ending form is going to be just like this. Your weight stays on the left foot. Your right heel's off the ground because your weight stays on the left foot. And the club is just as long as the back swing. We don't need it any longer, there's no hit. You're just swinging the club. Here's your starting form, and you just turn. That's your ending form. Now people struggle with this club, with this, first they struggle with the setup, because they get the ball too far back in their stance, they got an open stance, and they go up and down, they're hitting down the ball. Then they struggle with the swing, because they're trying to scoop the ball in the air. Their first move down is, is to try to scoop it, try to help it into the air. And they end up with their weight back here and the left heel off the ground, like this. They're scooping the ball as, as opposed to compressing the ball. So to get away with this, you're gonna give you a few drills where you just, you're swinging the whole club straight back and straight through. And just feel the whole club on the start of the downswing, the weight staying here, the whole club takes back low quiet hands, you're not picking the ball up, extending and swinging down. Nice, nice quiet move. Straight back, straight through. Now you can use your little ball that I give all my students and this helps for this drill a lot. Put the feet, weight, just keep the weight when you're doing this little drill on the, uh, on the left hand foot. Keep your weight there. And you're just gonna feel the club head swing with the ball with the weight staying on your left foot. And you'll see the back swing is the same length as the, far, as the uh, forward swing. It's symmetrical and it's rhythmical. You're just swinging the whole club. That's when you have that feeling of swinging the whole club. You know, I recently read a book by uh, Golf and Point A by uh, Susie Meyer and uh, Valerie Lazar. It's a good little book. And one, one little phrase they had in there that I like is that there's a, a starting form and an ending form and there is no middle. I like that. The, 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 the point of there is no middle is there's no thinking. You don't think about anything. You don't, you don't, there's no hit or you're not trying to do anything. You're just starting here in balance, mentally, physically relaxed, in balance, and you're ending in balance. And if you do that, your swing is going to be in balance. If you want to make a uh, uh, hit the ball farther, this little guy here, I'm not hitting the ball very far. If I wanted to hit it just a little bit farther, I just make a little bit bigger backswing. That's all, I just control the distance with my length, my backswing. If I have to hit it even farther, I get another club, my, my 54 degree. Okay, so now we're, we're, we've got the swing down. Now the point, now we've got to do is get the ball in the middle of the club face. There's a few drills I use for that with my students. I put a little noodle down I just use some uh, restraints that make it easy for them to learn. I'll put a little T down here, a noodle down there, and they'll just learn to swing the club head down this little gate. It's kind of like a little gate drill, 
kind of like like the one we used with the uh, putting. Now most most golfers tend to be steep. They tend to come down too steep, and they hit the ball with the toe, and they'll hit this tee. So you just learn. You want more swinging back and forth. Keep the weight in the left foot. Take your stance. Take a little uh, take a little alignment stick because again we're going to try to hit, have you from a I want you from a square stance. It's easier to come in shallow that way. The ball's in the middle of the stance. Your weight's forward. Your hands are even with the club head or just slightly ahead. You're looking at the ball. And then you're just swinging the club head straight back and forth, nice and low. Straight back and straight through. That's all there is to it. If you want to hit the ball a little farther, just make a little bigger backswing. If you don't, if you don't want to hit the ball as far, Make it a little, next one, not as long. It's just the same rhythmic, rhythmic motion. Same back and forth rhythmic motion. Um, once you've got it down, it's, you know, it's very hard to, to so their misses will really drop off. And uh, when you, you, you learn to utilize all of your wedges to control your trajectory and, uh, and spin. So I hope that helps.